As central banks around the world look to reduce their balance sheets, the stock markets must somehow stand on their own two feet. This is also at a time in which interest rates will continue to rise. This is quite a lot to handle for central bankers who have been fooling the public since 2009. Soon, however, they'll realize that they will have no other choice but to fire up the printing presses. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to look at several indicators. I want to touch on central banks. I want to cover inflation. I want to look at the CPI, employment, and so much more. Let's begin. This is the most important indicator. There are thousands and thousands of indicators. This is the most important, and that is... The central bank balance sheet, in this case, it's showing the G3 central bank balance sheet and the Dow Jones, and that is the U.S. stock markets. These two have been in complete lockstep since the financial crisis. They are correlated and they correspond entirely. You can follow these through, and while there are some variances along the way, it is very clear that the more money they print, the higher the stocks will go. But something is changing. And we're going to look at that right now. Early 19 is when global year over year QE turns negative, 12 month changes in balance sheets. And you will see, no matter who we're looking at right here, the Fed, BOJ, BOE, ECB, SMB, and China, and you will see for yourself. The intention is to reduce their balance sheets. They're all claiming that this is going to happen, that they're going to reduce the trillions and trillions of dollars. The question I have is, how in the world... Will they ever be able to support the markets if they're not printing money? Because that's the reason why the stock markets have gone up in the first place. And there is a lot of talk that they will attempt to do this. And that at some point, soon after, of course, they're going to have to start up the printing presses again. And this is probably the most likely scenario that they can say, hey, we tried. But, and then they will point their finger at something. So looking at all of this, it is very clear that the stock markets are reliant on central bank easing, whether that's coming from very, very, very low interest rates or historic levels of money printing. You will see here, the liquidity tide goes out. Let's see who has been swimming naked. Now, looking at this, you can see what their plan is. And I've covered this chart before. I've referred to it before. $1 trillion, in fact, greater than $1 trillion in tightening. When you total up all of the different central banks, their plan is to... Tighten up that liquidity by more than a trillion dollars. And that is, let's say, within the next year. I don't know how they're ever going to accomplish this. The Federal Reserve is claiming $400 billion. If you see the chart, I mean, I know you have. It's It went up. It's been going sideways. And if you just... I don't know if you can even see that, but it's barely there. It's just a blip on the screen at how much they have reduced their balance sheet. It's a joke. So they're going to be able to somehow reduce by $400 billion, and that still leaves them with $4 trillion. So are we talking about tightening, or are we talking about playing around? They know there have been central bankers that I've quoted here before, talking about the fact that they don't know what they can do to get rid of this. 
They literally have no idea. They know that if they just put it out there, don't you know, don't um, get it again, or let it roll over, that this will collapse the entire financial system. So they can do it slowly, but ultimately, if the market feels that this is it, this is the end of QE, this is the end of easy monetary policies, the stock market's gonna crash, then they have to, again, ramp up the printing presses. All right, stocks making big moves, but going nowhere. You have to remember that at this time, there is no more QE coming from the Federal Reserve, at least what we're being told. But there has been quite a bit, in fact, coming from other central banks. And that has pushed the markets up higher. But there has been a lot of tension over the past few months, resulting in some volatility. Two-week total range of less than 5%, but at least 7-1% daily moves in that time. And it's a little blurry, but I believe it says record 8-1% moves in two weeks, despite a total range of less than 5%. So we are seeing maximum volatility. And you know what? I recognize this. If you remember during the financial crisis... And in fact, they've highlighted it here for us. There were moments in which the market was moving like this. It would move up 500 points, down 500 points, up 500 points, down 500 points. And it was, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5% in a single day. And you would see that occurring. It was obviously causing a lot of headache for some individuals. A lot of people were losing money. A lot of them were buying on margin. They were just losing their shirts. And ultimately, what we can see from this is that the same sort of patterns are happening today. Now, looking at this, comparing what we see today to back during the JFK era. Now, am I saying exactly the, the same thing is happening? No. But just look at the pattern. And you can see that. I've, I showed you this before a few months ago. And in fact, it's still continuing, which is interesting. You can see where it's going. Now, they can simply pick up the pace and, and let it go, but I don't know what's going to bring it higher. Ultimately, if things start to ease, sure, we can have some positivity in the markets, they go higher. We can have QE to bring it higher. We can have lower interest rates to bring it higher. But ultimately, the trajectory right now is looking like it's going down. So we'll see. This is a chart form, I'm not going to cover the whole thing, but essentially just trying to show you the different market plunges. And it's actually quite significant. Many people shook it off that it's nothing, but it was nearly 12% in the initial sell-off. In 1987, the initial sell-off was around 9%. 1962, was around 7%. So you'll see here, it's something to note. That's all I wanted to really point out looking at this when you can see it might be hard to see on the side over here but u.s federal debt maturity profile all right most of this debt that they currently have is going to be maturing soon and as a result they have to begin to worry. Just like an individual, when your bills are coming due, and in this case, if they're rolling over their debt, what kind of interest rates are we looking at? This right here, they're basically showing the fact that they've been declining for years and years and years. How about issuing some bonds out here with rates down this low? Suggesting... Why not get longer-term debt instead of this shorter-term debt? I think they're worried. I think they're very, very worried at what's going to happen. The federal debt, given the monstrous rise in the federal debt as a percentage of GDP, it might be a good idea of thinking about locking in some funding. Nah, let's let it ride. Interesting chart there. Now, the CPI month over month, this is interesting. 
just on the month over month specifically. It dropped to the lowest level it's dropped to in a year. I don't think that necessarily anything in particular has been dropping when you look at food prices and energy prices, but ultimately the CPI is showing that. I'm going to just leave it there, but I wanted to mention it now, and we'll see if I have to reference it again next month. Percentage changes in CPI for all urban consumers. Okay, This is the CPI U. All items. All right. 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. What about food? 0. 0.1. 0. 0.1. Zero. 0. 0.2. 0. 0.2. Okay? You get the picture. They're telling us that your food prices have increased over the last year by 1.3%. I would really like to know, no matter where you live, I want to know what your food prices over the last year have been. I've been finding more and more produce items at a higher price. What I would have seen last year when that particular produce item comes in season, I do not see that same price this year and it is quite significantly higher if something was let's say a dollar it might be a dollar 29 it might be a dollar 50. there's big jumps there we're not talking about 1.3 percent i mean this is ridiculous as a spit in right in our face worried about your tax bill hedge fund star john polson owes one billion dollars take a look at this he owes a billion dollars this billion dollar is because of his bet that he made during the financial crisis, betting basically that subprime mortgages are going to fail. He made $4 billion. And now he's paying $1 billion. And essentially, what I wanted to talk about was the fact that during the financial crisis, some people were making a fortune. Others were losing their shirts. Just remember what side you want to be on. If you found this video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can look through these books at Amazon. There are links in the description below. Take care.